This word replevin, and I'll, I'll go back to the Amalekites in just a minute, but this word replevin was actually a word that was given to one of our CI ministers up in Canada uh, 15 years ago or so. And he was praying one day, and he saw the letters of this word come up, R-E-P-L-E-V-I-N, and he's like, wow, what in the world does that mean? That's awesome. What does that mean? So he gets a dictionary, he looks it up. Here's what replevin means. It's a legal term. It's used in courtrooms by judges. And it is an edict or decree by a judge authorizing a person to take back anything wrongfully taken or stolen from them. So in other words, somebody comes and steals my car and it's sitting over in their driveway. The judge issues me a writ of replevin that gives me authority to go over and take back what belongs to me. And I'm telling you, the church has got to start understanding that what belongs to us belongs to us and the enemy does not have a right to it. And we've got to understand that we've been authorized to go and take back. Take back our kids. Take back our finances. Take back our health. Take back our nation. We are authorized in this season to move into replevin. So the enemy wants to come take our prosperity. The Amalekite spirit also wants to take our posterity. Remember, it's against the seed. You sow seed, the enemy wants to come and gobble it up. I'm telling you, there's seed that you put in the ground, not just here tonight, but seed that, how many have been sowing seed? I'm telling you what, this is a time to get seed in the ground. The enemy comes to try to steal your seed. That's why there's an Amalekite spirit after your seed to try to take your threshing floor blessing. But he's also after our seed, the posterity. Posterity means that which follows after us, our kids, the generation that follows This is what happened with Haman. The enemy came to try to cut off a whole generation. I'm telling you, we're we're getting ready to see the largest wave of prodigal children and kids that have never even darkened the door of a church that have no clue who Jesus was. Let me tell you who Jesus is. We're getting ready to see one of the largest waves of teenagers, one of the largest waves of 10, 11, 12-year-olds, 20-year-olds, 30-year-olds. A huge wave of revival is coming because God is beginning to demonstrate signs, wonders, and miracles. There's an anointing on this generation that are just bold enough to believe that God will use them. Bold enough to believe that miracles aren't just meant for a pulpit. Miracles are meant for our hands wherever we go into our classrooms and into, uh, into our, our schools and into our football games, that miracles are going to flow. Amalekites are coming down. And the last thing they love to rob is your prophetic promise. Oh, well, that's, I'm too late for that. It's too, let me tell you, until you're on the other side of eternity, it's not too late. Bishop Hammond's 88. He's still believing God for fulfillment of prophecies. You know, what his, you know what his declaration is? He says, I'm going to live till I die. Come on. we got to understand, we've been given the right to fight back. Esther's decree is, if the enemy tries to take something, we've got the right to take back and then take back more. And so I want you to stand up with me because we're going to make a decree. As you're standing up, I'm just really having you stand up because I know you've been sitting for about an hour. But really, we're going we're gonna to move kind of into a decree period. Haman's sons were already dead. Haman was already dead. So why did they hang him? And why is that significant? Because the hanging of Haman's sons was a declaration that the reign of Haman is over. There have been things in this nation that have been ungodly, that have gone seemingly unchallenged, and it's unadulterated wickedness. And God says, enough is enough. And God says, the reign of Haman is over. God said, the reign of Haman was over. Let me pull this into the New Testament so that you can understand the same thing that happened when Jesus defeated death, hell, and the grave. I'm going to read you from Colossians chapter 2. It says, he canceled out every legal violation we had on our record and the old arrest warrant that stood to indict us. He erased it all, our sins, our stained soul. He deleted it all, and they cannot be retrieved. 
Everything we once were in Adam has been placed on his cross and nailed permanently there as a public display of cancellation. Then Jesus made a public spectacle. Jesus himself made a public spectacle of all the powers and principalities of darkness, stripping away from them every weapon and all their spiritual authority and all their power to accuse us. Are you hearing this? And by the power of the cross, Jesus led them around as prisoners in a procession of triumph. He was not their prisoner. They were his. The hanging of Haman's ten sons signifies the end of an era. Things have shifted. Let me say it again. Things have shifted. It's not all going to look pretty. When it shifted in Esther's day, it was a bloodbath. I'm not calling, I'm not prophetically saying that. I'm just saying it was a mess. It was upheaval. It was people gnashing their teeth. It was people wailing. It was people losing their minds. There's people that are losing their minds right now. Turn on the TV. Lay your hands on your own head and say, don't let me be one of them. So we're going to make a decree. I'm, and I'm going to have this up on the, so I want us to all say this together because we're going to make this decree. And then we're going to decree some speci specific things. No, okay, let's just do it together, okay? We decree that the time for the hanging of Haman's sons has come. It is a time of divine reversals, a time of turnarounds, a time to destroy the Amalekite assignment in this land. We break the spirit of robbery in Jesus' name. We command you to loose the state of Florida and return all that you have stolen in righteousness and truth, in provisions and resources now in Jesus' name. Therefore, we say woe to the decrees of the enemy and to every plot, plan, and conspiracy to overthrow true righteousness and justice. For righteousness and justice are the foundation of God's throne. We decree the Lord of hosts, Lord Sabaoth, the Lord of the angel armies, will establish your throne here in Walton County, in Bay County, in Holmes County, in Washington County, in Escambia County, in Okaloosa County, in Santa Rosa County, in any other county I forgot in the panhandle. We decree the righteousness and justice of God coming down and establishing your throne and in the U.S. once again. We decree the schemes of Haman that Antichrist spirit, that Antichrist agenda, and his ten sons to conspire against the righteous and to rob will boomerang back on their own heads. It is a boomerang season. It is a season of joy. It is spiritual purim. It is time to rise up and take it all back. And if you believe that, give the Lord a shout in this place tonight. Shout it to God. <laughs> 